Um, next, we will be hearing from Robert Sarvis, who, as I said, will be running for governor this year. And uh, he would like to say a few words about bureaucracies. Um, I'm sure he has stories, just as all of us do, about how we're approaching on our rights and taking our money and putting our money into organizations and things that we don't want our money going into. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. As uh, Alexander said, I'm running for governor this year in Virginia as a libertarian. This is a very important election because I think that Virginia is in a uh, is, is facing many challenges today and will be facing many challenges in the next generation that are unlike any in the past because of technology, because of global competition, and that's why we need somebody who is who understands all the problems that we've been talking about here and the problems that we're going to face in the future. Focusing on bureaucracy, though, I do want to point out, I do want to focus on two institutional features that, that, have, that have sort of uh, enabled this bureaucratization of our lives, and then talk about uh, a few other sort of economic arguments for what's going on. So the first thing is delegation. Uh, the entire purpose of the Constitution was to split power, to recognize that there are different types of power, the legislative power, the executive power, and the judicial power, and to split those up because, as I believe Madison put it, the concentration of those powers in the hands of one body or one person is the very definition of tyranny. And Thomas Jefferson said, it doesn't matter if there are 271 tyrants or one, it's still tyranny, right? So delegation is the process whereby the Congress or at the state level, the state legislature, gives lawmaking, rulemaking power to an administrative agency, a bureaucracy. This is problematic for obvious reasons. The executive agencies are under the executive branch. When you give them legislative power, that's concentrating two powers. And then when they have adjudicatory authority as well, and the courts are giving deference to those administrative agencies, now you have all three concentrated, and that's very problematic. So how does this happen in a system that we thought had a balance of powers? Well, there was admittedly a, a mistake of judgment by the founders. The founders were imperfect, and they believed that they had put the constitutional powers, they had aligned the interests, the personal interests of the legislators with the constitutional powers of the office. And they did a remarkable job, but one of the problems is they didn't foresee the way we do politics today. And that is, if you are a legislator, you can say, I am going to pass a law to, say, protect children, or protect your drinking water, or protect anything else that you think ought to be protected. But they don't have to actually write the exact rules that we have to live under. So there's no accountability. They passed the law and they said, I did my job. They can go to you and say, anything that anything bad that comes from these, this law, well, it's not my fault. I, I did what I needed to do. It's the administrative agency that you have to go talk to. So there's actually an incentive for legislators to delegate the actual rulemaking authority to the other branch. So that's a very that's a very strong incentive, and that's what you see all the time. And you know, when, when Obama, uh, the Administrative Care uh, Act, um, uh, sorry, not the Administrative, the uh, Patient Protection and um, the, well, the ACA, um, when that came along, it was a thousand pages long. But everybody who knew how things worked realized that even though the legislator didn't even know what was in the bill, the bill wasn't even half the laws that we're going to have to live under. The actual laws are being written by the administrative agencies, many of them already existing, increased power, many of them new bureaucracies. And so that's a real problem. Another, another uh, principal feature of the Constitution was that the power of the purse lay with the House of Representatives. But in many of these delegating acts, the power to tax is actually given to bureaucracies which is really problematic because there, there's so little control that we have as voters over executive administrations. 
So one example of this is the Universal Service Fund, where Congress says we want to subsidize either telephone service or broadband service in certain areas, rural areas where it's costly. And the administrative agency has the power to actually determine how much we need to raise, how much gets spent, and where it gets spent. And it actually not just sets the level of the taxation, it also forces private companies to be the tax collectors. So that's why you have a universal service fund uh, item on your phone bills. So these are the two principal institutional problems, delegation and concentration of not just legislation, but executive and judici judicial powers. So how does this how does this create problems in the actual day-to-day -day, uh, operation of these bureaucracies? Well, the first thing I'd like to talk about is the idea of type 1 versus type 2 errors. No bureaucracy wants to make the mistake of a child being abused that they had the opportunity to protect. So that's one type of error. The other type of error, though, is where you think abuse is happening, but it's not. And that's, or, or I'll give you another example, in the FDA, you don't want a drug that the FDA said was okay to cause a lot of side effects and deaths. But what we don't see is all the lives that are lost due to the very lengthy regulatory process for getting a drug to market. So that's type one versus type two errors. The only one that gets blowback for the agencies is when they say yes to a drug and then some people die and they could have prevented that. And so what you get is a vast, costly, lengthy regulatory process that causes much more harm than good in many cases because we don't get more drugs to market at the time. So that creates a single-mindedness that has a lack of proportionality and a lack of perspective. And you actually see this in every single bureaucracy that we have. You see it, I mean, this is exactly the problem with the NSA. They will go to every length to know everything about us so that they can catch every terrorist that they can. That's the incentive. When, some, when something bad happens, an act of terrorism happens, everybody says, why didn't we know about this? But especially when the programs are secret, nobody is saying, nobody was saying, at what cost? And it's really hard when it's a secret program to weigh the balance. But even when it isn't a secret program, like with the FDA process that I mentioned, child protection services, it's still, we're still not able to, um, to measure the cost well because of this problem between type one and type two errors. I would submit that the ABC incident in Charlottesville from a couple months ago was also part of this, that the enforcement being in the ABC gives them a single single-mindedness about, about enforcing the ABC laws. That gives them a total lack of proportionality and relativity with respect to other uses of police resources. That's one of the reasons that I think that we, that we should take enforcement powers out of the ABC bureaucracy. Another thing that you see in the bureaucracies which is really problematic, if you think about some of the smaller bureaucracies that we have, or the more targeted ones that don't get a lot of the news, um, often it's regulation of a, particular, of a particular industry. So that if you have somebody outside of that industry, if you, if you uh, appoint someone from outside the industry, then people say, well, they don't know, they don't understand the industry. That's not fair. But then when you appoint someone in the industry, well, then it's part of the industry and, 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 you, and you run the risk of the, using the regulations for protection of market incumbents. And then you get a closed market, lack of competition, protection of private interests, private profits rather than the public interest. And that is, that is repeated every, in every single uh, regulatory agency, federal, state, and local levels. You also get the regulatory agencies arguing for their own expansions of power and advocating Kind of often trumping up the dangers, if you don't fund us more, this is what's going to happen. And this is exactly what goes on with private companies 
lobbying the government. This is exactly what happened with AIG. Making their books look worse so that we'd be more likely to bail them out. This happens in the public sector too, with regulatory agencies saying, we need more power. So, so there are a lot of problems that I see, and I think that there are a few solutions. One, I think, is that delegation has to, um, has to be reined in. There are a couple ways to do that. One is to require the legislature to actually pass all the discretionary rulemaking that the, bureaucrat, that the bureaucrats put forth before they become, before they have the force of law. If they are regulating private behavior with the force of law, that should go through the legislative process because the legislators are the ones that are accountable to us. That requires courts to enforce what's called the non-delegation doctrine, which is that courts can say this legislation was not, did not, did not give the rules, the guidance for the rules that were created. There's general goal statutes rather than rule statutes. Goal statutes say we want to protect X and gives the rulemaking powers and doesn't give in an explicit way to balance the costs and benefits of different rules. And so bringing back the non-delegation doctrine I think would be a good thing because that, the courts are the only place where you can force legislators to do actual legislation. The second thing is to try and return more to a common law uh, regulatory system where it's the harm you cause that creates your liability rather than paying up front in compliance costs to comply with rules that are written by bureaucrats who have no way of knowing the relative costs, the relative risks that you're running in the behavior you engage in. In the common law system, as I said, you, you hurt someone, you, you, you create harms for other people, you pay for it, that's the best incentive. That gives you the, the right incentive. Puts the incentives in the right place, and it does so in an efficient manner. So that's why liability rules are so important. And what have we done in so many areas? Well, private interests have lobbied to get liability rules removed for them. This happens all over the, all over the place. And it's just and it's terrible. Republicans and Democrats both do it. So that's why the rule of law is so important. And that's why open and competitive markets, that we've gotten away from those, and we have to get back to that. Because that's what creates jobs. That's what's going to get people back to work in Virginia. So that's, you know, that's, that's mostly what I wanted to talk about. But I also want to just mention that another feature of bureaucracy is that it's centralized by its very nature. And centralized bureaucracies don't have the knowledge of local, local affairs, the relative merits of this or that road project. I have no idea how it makes sense that Richmond determines which road projects around the state get funded. And I know it's inefficient, and this is exactly what Hayek called the fatal conceit, that we can have centralized planning that is superior to what the markets can, can provide through, through open and competitive processes. So, if you start from the founders and you look at the expansion of freedom, you also have to recognize that the bureaucracies are where we are concentrating power and that they are our modern day tyrants. And so that's, that should be the focus of our reforms going forward to return power to the people, return freedom to the people, to get legislative powers back in the legislature, give strong judicial uh, oversight to the courts, and get back to what we all thought. Um, what, we, what we really believe, and that's that the Constitution actually works. If we follow the Constitution, it will work for us. So thank you very much. Be happy to talk to you afterwards about my campaign, about anything else.